Last year, I spent a lot of time on the interviewing team for the laboratory technologist positions that we had open at my company. And did you know that myself, as well as many others, have a specific process that they go through to determine what they're gonna ask a candidate during an interview, let alone even bring a candidate in for an interview? I'm gonna share with you guys exactly what I do when I'm reviewing resumes and how to determine what questions I'm gonna ask a candidate because I hardly ever ask the same question over and over and over interview after interview. So if you would like some insights from a lab tech interviewer, then keep on watching. Before we dive into the video, if you like content like this, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Leave a comment if you're feeling so inclined, hit the like button as well. I make content like this very often, so you don't wanna miss out on it. Okay, so when I have a resume sent to me, the first thing I do before even looking at the resume is make sure I have the job description pulled up. That way I know exactly what we're looking for in the next candidate, what their duties are, responsibilities, required experience, things like that. Then once I have the resume, I'm printing it out and I'm highlighting it and comparing it against the job description that I have. What I'm looking for in the resume is any relevant experience that matches the job description that was posted. If there's no like direct experience or like very specific experience according to the job, I'm looking for experience that you do have that I think could translate into the job that would probably would make you a great candidate for this role. The team that I am a part of, I feel like we definitely have a good idea of not everyone is going to have experience, especially if they're a younger candidate or like I said before in like previous videos, my job has a very specific asset that we developed so everyone might not have the exact experience that we're looking for and we definitely understand that so I would say my team is very good at realizing that everyone has to start somewhere everyone needs a chance so even if you don't have exact experience that we have listed on the job description any type of relevant experience or relevant education we definitely take into account reviewing the resume and going through the job description also determines what I'm gonna ask so I'm basically tailoring what I see on the job description what I think will possibly match on your resume and I'm coming up with questions. That way you can just talk about it in the interview. I'm also going to look up your LinkedIn. My team does this all the time. We go to people's LinkedIn, not necessarily to see what you look like. We don't really care if you have a picture up. It's mainly to see if your LinkedIn aligns with what your resume says. Sometimes people will leave things off of their resume or will have a different objective written on their LinkedIn versus what's on the resume. So for example, we've had a resume come in before where the person said on their resume that they they were very interested in working in the lab, learning all those techniques, learning the back end, all those other type of things. But when we went to their LinkedIn, we saw that they were currently in school and they were trying to go to med school. And so while there's not an issue with the two misalignments um, between the resume and the LinkedIn, obviously the LinkedIn is probably closer to what the person actually wants to be. And at that point, we kind of have to decide, are you going to be a long-term person if we do decide to hire you? Or will you only be here a couple months after we spent a lot of time training you and things like that just for you to go? off and do what you really want to do which again it's not an issue depending on what type of position it is but some companies depending on the position requires a lot more time when it comes to training and resources so that can be a turn off to some employers now when it comes to the actual interview I want to say that whatever you put on your resume just know that it is fair game for someone to bring up during the interview and this isn't trying to be like a pop quiz on what you know or what's on your resume for the interviewee it's more so for our understanding so we can understand exactly what your background is. So for example, if you have on your resume that you've done equipment maintenance, I'm gonna ask you what type of equipment maintenance have you done it on? Have you done it on centrifuges, pipettes? Were you doing weekly maintenance, monthly maintenance? Were you actually being hands-on and doing the maintenance yourself or were you just scheduling the maintenance? All of these questions matter because at my job, we have a lot of maintenance due. We do weekly maintenance, we do monthly maintenance, we do quarterly, yearly, we do it ourselves. It's very rare that we have a third party come in and do the maintenance for us. So that is why a question like that may get asked. And this is not like a determining factor on whether or not I would decide like, should that person be hired or not? Again, it's just for our knowledge. That way when we bring you in, maybe you're not a lab tech one, maybe you're a lab tech two because you have some sort of relevant experience, some sort of hands-on experience. So not a make or break, it's just us delving deeper to figure out where exactly you stand on uh, the candidate like spectrum. Now, no matter what you have on your resume, whether you have direct experience or indirect experience, you want to make sure you are correlating it back to what's in the job description. If you have lab experience, this isn't too hard. It's literally just thinking about what you've done in the lab and 
applying it to the job description. If you don't have direct relevant job experience, I feel like people can struggle with this question a bit or to struggle with how to answer questions that relate it back to the job description. But for example, most jobs, especially lab positions, require you to be detail oriented. It's gonna be somewhere in the job description, right? So say you've never worked in the lab before, but right now you're an Amazon delivery driver, right? Talk about how you have to be very detail oriented with your deliveries to make sure that you're getting the right packages to the right customer in a timely manner. That can all be related back to how you're detail oriented, how you have time management, how you don't miss little details. That is great skills for the lab. So just because you don't have direct lab experience doesn't mean you can't get the job, doesn't mean you don't know how to answer the questions that they're asking you. You just need to be prepared to turn the experience that you do have into relevant experience and relate it back to the job description. And speaking of relevant things, leave irrelevant things off of your resume. Your resume should be two pages max. I know in school, I believe you learn resume should be one page um, altogether. I don't think that's realistic. Most of us who do the interviewing don't think that's realistic personally our preferences we say two pages and this sounds kind of silly maybe but we've gotten a nine page resume before i'm not going to not read your resume i need to know what's on there but it's a it's pretty tedious to read a nine page resume now you can imagine if something is a nine page resume there has to be a ton of things on there that it's not relevant so for example if you have like a skill section please don't list any irrelevant skills such as like fashion design sewing Printing. Printing may be relevant, but it's not a skill. You know what I mean? It doesn't need to be on there. Singing doesn't need to be on there. Gardening, you have a green thumb. People skills, that doesn't really need to be on the resume, to be completely honest. There's nothing for me to ask you about that. There's nothing that I think, I'm not gonna ask you about it. And again, this sounds silly, but I have seen resumes with those type of skills on there applying for a lab technologist position. Another thing, ditch the fancy formatting of resumes. I know when you go into Word, there's a lot of options for different like uh, resume templates that look really nice, has like cool formatting on the side and has these different headers and colors. I think you should just leave that alone and and I say this because once again, we've seen many resumes that have these different types of uh, formatting, but then it actually causes a lot of errors on their resume. And it also shows us that the person is not proofreading their resume. So sometimes we've seen formatting, like some of it starts here, it's a paragraph, but then it ends up over here on the side. And then you have another body here. It's really weird. And it's because of this weird formatting that Word does for resumes. Also people not proofreading their resume. So also make sure that you're proofreading your resume because people do notice us reading your resume it's very obvious we notice people missing like proper punctuation or misspellings or um some sections are in all caps and some sections aren't we've noticed people leave like um i guess if you're filling out like a a template or something and it says like insert program name here we've seen that still in the resume like someone forgot to insert the name so just dish the fancy formatting if you need help with making your resume i have a resume template linked down in my bio it comes with a lot of other information as well your resume does not have to be super fancy it just needs to be straight to the point it needs to be easy to read and then there are some common probing questions that myself or my team typically does ask so something that i feel like everyone gets asked is tell us about yourself and I always follow like a three point rule for that. And so if personally for me, when someone says, tell me about yourself, I talk about the past, what I'm doing currently and what I want to do in the future. So maybe about two good sentences. I'm blank. I went to this school, I graduated then. I was interested in blah, 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 blah. Right now I'm currently working for this person. I do this, this, and this short and simple. I'm looking for a job that I can expand my knowledge in lab tech or in the lab or in robotics, something like that. Past, present, future, and boom, boom, boom. I know, I know what you're looking for. Another question that I kind of do ask everyone, but I don't always ask it. I think it's a very good question, but I mainly ask it when sometimes I feel like people are 
confused about the role or maybe they're answering things and I'm just like, I'm not sure they understand what this position is. So I will ask the person, what are you looking to get out of this role if you're hired? That tells us like kind of like a short insight to what their goals are and definitely because it's an understanding on like whether or not you understand what this role actually is because there have been times where someone has said one thing and then we have to pop in and say, okay, that's, that's great. But I just wanna make sure that you know that this role is for X, Y, and Z. Another popular question that my team asks is, do you have experience pipetting? And it's because our job, while a lot of it is automated, when it's not automated or when we're doing quantification, it requires a lot of pipetting and it requires really good skill because we have to be very accurate. If it's not accurate, you have to redo it. And you know, it's just a long process. So we're asking, what's your experience with pipetting? Do you single channel, multi-channel, repeater, expandable? If you don't have experience, again, it's okay. We're just trying to figure out where you fall on the spectrum of the candidate that we're looking for. There's nothing wrong with not having experience. We've had someone and we've hired someone who said to us, I took a training on pipetting at my last job, but I didn't do any pipetting. So I would, I'm not that comfortable with pipetting and we hired them. So it's not make or break once again. Another question that I would say is pretty common is what do you do during downtime? What do you do when you don't have any quote unquote work to do in the lab? This is just kind of figuring out, honestly, if you're a team player. So like if you say, oh, I just wait till someone assigns me work. Mm, it's not really the best answer. You could say, I'll see who needs help. I'll see if I can learn something else. If I'll ask around, I'll shadow, I'll try and do maintenance. And you know, basically we're trying to see if you're gonna find things to fill your time. And if you're a self-starter or if you're just kind of relying on like someone to plop desk on your work and say, here you go. Something we may wanna know if you do have somewhat relevant experience, like working with samples, we may ask you, walk us through your sample receipt process through testing. What do you do? when you get the sample through the door and it's ready for patient reporting, walk us through that process. Again, we're just trying to figure out what you're familiar with, what you have experience with, type of programs you have experience, uh, skills, things like that. Next question, why do you wanna work here? Why do you wanna work for a blank company? Surprisingly, this is not a question that we ask all the time. We only ask this question, again, depending on what the person's previous answers have been. And I say we, because normally we do one big group interview where like we have like the candidate and there's four about four or five of us interviewing at one time and so one of us I feel we will all kind of get the vibe and we'll ask the question why do you want to work here and we're looking for something that shows that you actually know about the company and that you at least looked us up whether or not you can explain in detail what we do we don't really care but if you can say some buzzwords that's fine with us so MRD oncology, blood sample testing, things like that shows that you at least look at their website, whether or not you understand what we actually do is a different story because that's fine. But we don't wanna hear things like, oh, it's closer to your home. Oh, I don't wanna work night shift anymore. We've, we've heard all of those things. So those aren't good answers of why you wanna work here. More money, I need more money. We've heard that too. There's nothing wrong with being direct or being honest, I should say but it's how you say it. And a lot of times these, these people who answer this, it, there's nothing else to it. It's literally just like, I want more money. Next question. And it's just like, okay then. Well, next question. So you just wanna make sure that you're doing a little bit of research. I'm not sure if, I feel like it's a, it's a really cliche question. So I think probably most companies will ask it, but like I said, we don't ask it that often. So toss up, but just be prepared anyways. Another question I only ask based on how you've been previously answering questions are honestly, sometimes even if your resume is a bit confusing for me, something I will ask is what are your three strengths? And again, very cliche question but I only ask it if I'm like confused or your other answers have been like a bit rocky I just want to know what you're gonna say and how you're gonna elaborate and I feel like this is a very very common question so I feel like you should always come prepared with three strengths and three weaknesses when I was interviewing for positions I always had that in my head already. I knew what I was gonna say. And when I give my weaknesses, I always say what I'm doing to improve it. So maybe I say, yeah, a weakness of, of mine is I just forget to, to follow up on this one last step that we always have. 
but what I've been doing to work on it was writing it down on sticky notes and setting alarms that way I don't forget. So you wanna make sure you're elaborating on how you're doing better or what you're doing to work on that. Okay, so now you know the entire process of getting a resume, reviewing it, coming up with questions. So I hope you take that into account for your next interview that you're gonna get and apply it and you kill it. Like I said, if you're stuck on your resume or need help writing it, I have some templates available for you down below. So don't forget to check those out. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.